Hey, welcome everybody to an evening with Hope College series. We're super excited for all of you out there to be joining us. We're continuing the conversation. I know last week was a really great week with some great topics. And tonight is one near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about Hope College athletics. Uh, I'm excited. We've got some coaches. We've got some players. Uh, we've got one of our athletic directors who's going to join us. Um, but just wanted to let you know, my name is Lance Pello. I'm an admissions rep at Hope College. Uh, while I was a student at Hope College, I had the pleasure of playing four years of varsity soccer. Uh, it was a great experience for me. I truly enjoyed uh, my time on the field, but it was actually the stuff that happened off the field and the relationships that I formed uh, that really made the greatest impact for me as a student athlete. Uh, there were people like Rich Ray and Glenn Van Weeren and Dean Kreps and my own coach, uh, Steve Smith, uh, who really invested in me uh, on the field, but, but more in the classroom and more outside of the classroom. And those are relationships that I cherish and, and value today. Um, so, uh, you know, another one of the uh, relationships that I truly value is with Tim Schoonveld. Uh, Tim is our uh, athletic director. He's a professor of kinesiology. He teaches at the Center for Leadership. Um, and we've asked Tim to come in here. There he is. Um, Tim, good to see you, buddy. How are you? Good to see you too, Lance. Thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, Scooney, um, we're going to get right to it. I wanted to see if you'd share a little bit about um, kind of your hope journey uh, and share what your role with the college is. And then if you would touch on maybe the mission of Hope College Athletics. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. And I think for those of you that are joining us virtually, we're uh, grateful that you're here. Um, I think Lance hit on some of the things, you know, already, um, you know, it's, it's just a family. And so like he talks about all the names of people that influenced him. And uh, unfortunately, I'm a little older than he is, but uh, like all of those same people uh, impacted me. And I think there's just kind of a legacy that carries on. And it's really what we're hoping to um, continue on with our coaches now and, and with all of you as, as you look at uh, where you want to go. So I, I've been at Hope for 11 years. Um, I, I'm the athletic director, and uh, this is our first year having a sole athletic director. In the past, we've had uh, a dual role, like co-athletic directors. Um, I've taught out of the kinesiology department and also our leadership department and uh, and uh, first year seminar. So I, I'm I'm grateful to be here. Um, you know, in athletics, we wind up. Um, saying there's there's really three three main goals that we have and it's academic success um, we want you to be successful academically and to get out of here and be prepared for life um, whether that's grad school or whether that's to go directly into a career and um, so i think we're we're searching for academic success um, you know the team gpas of of our schools i think the lowest one was a cumulative 3.0 so um, it's a big deal for us and uh, we continue to push for that uh, second uh, we would say competitive excellence. And we um, we don't really make any uh, joke about it. We want to win. And, uh, we, you know, we would say we really want to win at everything. And so we want to win academically. We want to win spiritually. We want to win competitively. And uh, we want you to win in life. And uh, so that's really a big thing. I think the unique piece about that is if, you know, wherever you're looking to get recruited, everybody offers those two things. They're trying to get you uh, academically successful and they're trying to help you win. Um, I think I think the third thing that we try to do is we wanna transform your life. And we would say ac academic success, competitive excellence and transformational experiences. And um, we want this place to transform who you are. And uh, I like to think about it is when you walk across the graduation stage at the end of your four years here, uh, we want you to be a noticeably different person in positive and uh, amazing ways than you were when you came in. And uh, we believe you're probably an amazing person right now. Um, but we think uh, the people of hope um, can transform lives. And I think you're going to see that from the admissions uh, reps that are on here that are working with you, um, from the student athletes who you're going to get to hear from, and also from our coaches um, they're just people that want to transform lives. And we see that consistently. Uh, some of the admissions reps were students of mine and I've had in class and have profoundly impacted and changed my life and transformed that. Um, and uh, so, you know, really those are the three things that we continue uh, to strive for. 
Um, I, I think I think the, the separating piece obviously is a transformational piece. And then I think, you know, it, it goes along with that is, um, you know, God's most precious resource on earth um, is people. And uh, the people of hope uh, help transform lives. And uh, we hope that you get a flavor for that tonight. We hope that you come out and visit us um, in the coming year. And uh, we hope that you join us because uh, we, we do want to impact and transform your life. Thanks, Cooney. Uh, well said. Um, you know, Hope Athletics, um, for a lot of us, and not just our athletes, but our entire student population, these are um, games, uh, competitions, teams um, that we resonate with. And uh, people like Scooney and I, I speak firsthand, uh, they invest in our athletes. You know, one thing I certainly want everybody to know tonight is uh, the people you'll meet, um, albeit on a computer screen tonight, these are people that will be invested in your life. When we talk to coaches later, we'll hear from the athletes. But Scooney is one of those people um, that when you see him on campus, He'll stop you. He'll give you a hug. He'll he'll ask the questions because he cares deeply about uh, not just um, his colleagues or his boss, um, but his friends and, and the athletes that play in our, our department. So thanks, Cooney, for all you do. And, and thanks for your friendship and, and for making sports part of your life and part of the Hope community as well. Yeah. You know, thanks for having me here. I probably won't give you a hug right now, maybe just an elbow. So it'll be just an elbow sure. for you. And, and I do think that you'll get a flavor. We've got, you know, three coaches on here who, I mean, I see it day in and day out that are transforming lives. And uh, they're the kind of people that uh, in 10, 12, 15 years, uh, students are going to come back and say, hey, that's a person that made a huge impact on my life. And so I'm grateful to be a part of that team and to be a part of That's awesome. All right, Scooney, we're going we're gonna to kick you out here just for a little bit, but we'll bring you back to the end. Uh, when we have some questions from our audience. Um, so we're going to bring in our three student athletes. And, and I always like to um, acknowledge that at the Division three level, especially at Hope College, we like to think about our athletes as scholar athletes, you know, students first, athletes second. Uh, we've got three great ones uh, here with us tonight. Um, we've got Cam, we've got Gabby, and we've got Carter. Uh, welcome, guys. Thank you so much. Um, Cam, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your, your sport, and um, kind of uh, your story, where you're from, what you're doing at Hope. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, and thanks to everyone for joining. Um, my name's Cam Miller. I'm from Coldwater, Michigan. Um, kind of stumbled upon Hope between both my sisters. Um, I will be graduating in the spring of 2021. I'm a pitcher on the baseball team. And I'm also a business major with a concentration in finance and a minor in political science. Great, Cam. Thanks so much. Miss Gabby. Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm class of 2020, a volleyball player from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I'm an exercise science major and planning on moving on and getting my master's this upcoming fall. Awesome, Gabby. A little shout out. She works in the admissions office as well. So we love Gabby. All right, Mr. Carter, you're up. Hey, Lance. Um, I'm Carter. I am a sophomore this year. I'm um, going to graduate in the spring of 2022. I play football here, and my major is secondary education for social studies. Awesome. Thanks, Carter. All right, I've got a, a question. This is, this is the question for athletes, right? And you're each going to answer it. I want to get each of your opinions. We'll start with you, Cam. Um, how do you balance it? How do you do academics and athletics? And uh, what's your secret? How does it happen at Hope? Yeah, oh, that's a great question. Um, and I think I, you know, all incoming recruits are kind of, you know, thinking about that themselves. Um, and that's because both academic and sports, they're, they're gonna take a lot, up a large majority of your time. And ultimately for me, it boils down to planning out each and every day. Um, so usually the night before I'll, you know, look at my times that I have class, lunch, lifting, practice, um, times I have to go to the training room, um, and then I'll block off those chunks of time uh, for each of those events and then take the free time I have, whether it's 30 minutes between class or two hours, and I'll try to sit down and bust out an assignment or two or study a little bit. Um, and with me, you know, I know that being a collegiate student athlete will present lots of time constraints, but I've learned to develop routines and schedules in order to stay ahead of my work and communicate with my professors when I'll be gone or need help. 
Um, and, you know, I'm not going to lie to you guys all. I mean, sometimes playing, every, like juggling everything isn't the easiest. Um, but I've always remembered that everything will get done. Um, if there's people there to support you. Um, and then just as I'm sure Gabby and Carter have, you know, I went through a small period of time my freshman year having to adjust to the wild schedule change. And it's not necessarily easy at first, but um, you'll ultimately become so accustomed to it that it'll be second nature. And, you know, also the people at Hope, um, including professors, coaches, and even teammates, um, they're always willing to go to help you and go above and beyond to make sure you are successful. Um, so kind of my big thing is so never hesitate to reach out to others. Um, people want you to do, to do well here and that's what they're here for. So take advantage of all of that. And yeah, that's what I got for you. That's awesome, Kim. All right, Miss Gabby, volleyball team has been very successful uh, at Hope through the years. I think uh, Coach Schmidt has created a, a wonderful team. How do you balance it? How does, how does the volleyball team manage to do so well academically and do well athletically? Well, Cam, that was well said. I agree with all that you said. Um, but some opinions I have is that we have worked really hard. Uh, all student athletes have worked really hard at Hope to develop a great relationship with your faculty. So it's a very approachable relationship that if you do have to miss class for traveling or make up an exam or a quiz, um, if you just approach them and tell them, I'll have this turned in at this time, like this is my plan. Um, I respect your time and this is how I'm going to get my work done. They're very receptive to that. Um, and that's been really nice over my four years. But I would say day to day, I, I balanced it by having a hairbrush and extra snacks in my backpack. Because you get up, you go to class, you go to practice, shower, go to the dining hall with wet hair, walk to the library with wet hair, hence the hairbrush. Um, and then meet your teammates at a table, get some work done. You get a little bit of social time mixed in with the academics. Um, but yeah, it's really just kind of a no dilly dally when you're in season, especially that freshman year is an adjustment period. Even if you've done it during high school, um, it's different. But yeah, just give up some extra social things. Definitely there was no Netflix watching while I was in season. Um, but once you do develop those time management and orga organizational skills, it's totally doable and you'll have that time to relax and you'll realize, okay, I can pull this off and it's really fun and the hard work does pay off. It, yeah, I love that word doable. You know, it's the number one question we get as admissions reps when somebody's maybe a musician and an athlete or you know, wants to do pre-med and do uh, athletics as well. It is doable. It's doable at the division three level at Hope College. Um, because as you said, you're, you're gaining those skills, as Cam said, you know, you're, you're ready and you're prepared. Um, you're doing it right. Now, I, I would imagine Carter probably doesn't have to worry too much about the wet hair like Gabby does, but Carter, how do you manage, uh, to, to balance being on the football team, uh, and, and staying up with your classes and really, um, having a social life too. How do you manage it all? Yeah, definitely. Um, like Cam and, uh, Gabby said, um, it's a big change going from high school to college. There's a lot of um, different environments you're around, um, a lot more of a workload, you know, different concentration. And um, my biggest thing I saw was I have to get in a routine. Um, every day I have to like kind of have the same time slot to do homework because practice is already set out. Like Cam said, lifting, schoolwork's already set out. So just getting around that is a big deal. Um, and like Gabby pointed out, uh, faculty is really great here. Um, just how personable and well managed they are. As soon as you say like you're an athlete in a class, um, they're more than happy to reach out. Um, I've had plenty of times where they said, hey, good game. Um, just little things like that. It's, it's really weird, like being in a small college, a lot of the time, like the stereotype is like the professors don't really know your name. And um, that's one thing I'm really appreciative about this this college. Um, but yeah, um, being a part of a football team has a little more, has a couple more players than baseball and volleyball. So a lot more connections, a lot more people to just tell me, um, take up on this class. And um, overall, just, yeah, I don't have much more to say other than 
just sticking our routine. That's good. You know, I, I tell the story a lot that the first away game that we had when I was a freshman at Hope College, we were on the bus um, and I literally walked up and down the aisle of the bus as a freshman trying to socialize with my new teammates. Um, and just about every one of them had their nose in a book. Um, and, I, and I started to think, I remember coming back to my seat with my other freshman friend uh, and saying, wow, everybody's serious about this school stuff. We, you know, I, I should probably bring my books on the next trip. So, uh, but it was good. You know, I think that that routine, uh, that opportunity that Carter said to, to wake up every day and, and be in that role or that mindset. Uh, and I, I really think that during season, um, it's, it was actually easier for me uh, because you had that structure and you had that understanding. The off season was a little tougher. I had to do a little bit more on my own and, and set that schedule. So, all right, Cam, we're going to uh, shift away from the balancing act uh, and we're going to talk about uh, some other stuff. I got a specific question for you. Uh, what's your favorite part about being a Hope College scholar athlete? Yeah, uh, it's also a great question. And um, it's pretty open-ended because it could kind of go on forever for me. Um, but I've got kind of two things that I'd like to touch on. Um, first off, just simply having the privilege to represent Hope College as an institution um, is one of my parts. Um, it's, it's awesome. I mean, the Hope brand is awesome, and I, I love doing that every single day as a Hope baseball player. Um, also, the Holland community is second to none and absolutely loves the Hope athletes. Um, while I don't play basketball or volleyball, Gabby gets to – gets to play in DeVos Fieldhouse. Um, and, but being able to watch those teams in DeVos is, is awesome. The atmosphere is always electric. Um, the stands are full, ask anyone. It's like a, it's a D1 atmosphere um, at a D3 school. So yeah, as like I said, being able to wear the Hope brand across my back and coming off the Hope bus for away games always gives me a sense of pride. Um, and it's ultimately such a cool experience to be part of a brotherhood of Hope baseball players. Um, and that truly transcends through more than just between the white lines. Um, and also kind of one of my favorite things to talk about, um, is also Scooney touched on it is, um, you know, I had this discussion with coach Fritz when I was a recruit and an incoming player about, and he told me, yeah, Cam, you know, it's going to, hope's going to, we want you to have a transformational experience for us. And I was like, yeah, you know, initially I was kind of thinking coach was just being cheesy and wanted me to come play for him. And was just using, that was just his recruiting tool to kind of hook me in. Um, but I always held on to what he said and fast forward three years later and with hundred percent confidence, I can tell you that Hope College and Hope College Baseball did that for me, um, made me a better person, man, player, uh, and created relationship bonds that I will take with me forever. Um, yeah. And like I said, I could go on forever talking about, you know, my favorite parts about being a Hope athlete and what Hope Athletics has done for me. So. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, Kim. I think the relationships and it, is, it does sound cheesy, right, to an 18-year-old that, you, that your life's going to change by, by playing sports. I mean, we all love athletics, and, you know, we know that it, it provides that um, kind of escape for us. But the relationships that you build with people like Stu, your coach, and others across campus, and, you know, the people who are in the stands watching you, right, that you go grab a cup of coffee over at LJ's in downtown Holland, and somebody talks to you about, you know, the game that you pitched the night before. Um, that that means something. They they want to invest in you. That's that's really great. Thanks, Kim. All right, Miss Gabby. You know another thing that I'm really impressed by is just the leadership qualities that come from athletes at Hope. And you know this is the chicken or the egg conversation, right? Are are student athletes leaders even before they come to Hope? Um, does what they do at Hope turn them into leaders? But they're always involved off the field as well, um, in the classroom, out of the classroom. They're doing everything. How do you, Gabby, as a Hope student, um, how did you get involved with things? What things were you involved in? And how did kind of your volleyball background or being part of a team help lead you into doing some of those activities off the court? It's a great question, Lance. Um, yeah, I've really been able to have a well-rounded engagement in the community and in campus. And I've been really grateful for that. And I would say part of that is due to the fact that I'm part of a team. And then the other part is the fact that we get that off season, if you will, where, you know, you're not doing nothing, but there's much more free time to get involved in organizations and groups that you might not have the opportunity to do if you were, you know, in season year round. 
So a few things that I was involved in, I got to be on a student athlete advisory committee to help plan events for Hope Athletics. I got to do a research project uh, for a metabolism class during season. That was, you know, pretty tough, but it was fun. Um, I was able to be a peer tutor for some freshman classes. I got to be involved with Young Life and with Athletes in Action. Um, last spring, I got to be part of a program that was um, where I got to mentor an elementary student. And that was actually a program started by a football player. But I got to go once a week and play on the playground with fifth graders and talk to my mentee um, out in the hallway just about how her life was going. And that was a really special experience. Um, a big one for me was I got to study abroad in Scotland for five months, the spring semester of my sophomore year. And as an athlete that it doesn't happen a lot. And coach was really supportive of me in that. I actually had the opportunity to play on the university in Scotland's volleyball and soccer team. So getting that like international sport experience was amazing. And I was able to keep my touch, which was great when I came back. Um, and then in terms of being on the team, we do a big dance marathon event. I'm sure many of you have heard about this. It's a great fundraiser that the college does and we participate as a team, um, but we also just find ways to engage in the community together. So um, another thing that I think is special about um, Hope Athletics in general is just the camaraderie you get to have with other teams. You'll find that in a lot of athletic teams. Um, they're just like friends with each other, but also being able to find friendships outside of athletics because you do get that off season. So I hope I kept it brief enough. No, you're good, Gabby. You know, the mission statement at Hope College says we're preparing students for lives of leadership and service. And, and I really do believe that our athletic teams uh, play together and serve together. Uh, so there's plenty of opportunities and whether it's on campus or off campus um, to lead by example. And I think that's great with, with seniors like you, Gabby, who maybe a freshman can come in and not know what they want to get involved with uh, off the court. Uh, they can lean heavily into you and use you as an example and as a mentor for that as well. So all right, we're going to transition, Carter. Um, I know a lot of people out there, whether it's parents, uh, prospective student athletes, uh, incoming, uh, seniors who are coming to, to Hope next year as freshmen who are living it, but the recruiting trail, right? Getting recruited um, to play a sport at Hope College. I know you play uh, for one of the best recruiters we've got. Um, we often say that Coach Sturzma uh, is an extension of the admissions office. We don't have to do much uh, with the football players because he's doing it for us. What was your recruiting experience like and what kind of advice could you give to maybe student athletes out there who are thinking about playing college uh, at the NCAA level? Yeah, definitely. Um, to tie in on Coach Sturz, um, his recruiting style, I would say that um, it's definitely an advantage for a uh, Division three school. Um, just the fact that how personal and um, how caring, like you could tell that he was at each visit that I went to. Um, it just really stuck out. And one way I would describe the recruiting trip for me, um, as far as Hope College made it, was different. And that's why it stuck out. Um, this is a lot of Division II and Division three schools. I was definitely looking to play football, um, but I didn't really know where to land. Um, coming from a small town, Ohio, there's plenty of um, small schools around me, but kind of want to get my options open and venture out a little bit. And I kept getting a couple emails um, from a tiny college in Holland called Hope. I kept thinking, what, what do these guys want from me? And I started getting in contact just here and there. And then I started getting um, like handwritten letters, which is something I didn't get from anywhere else. And took a few trips um, kind of around the state. And I finally just got a call from Sturz one day. He said, hey, I really want you to like make this trip. Um, if you can make it before the end of the week, like that'd be fine. And it was the week before, um, I think it was finals week for hope. So I came up absolute blizzard and, um, college was pretty empty, but right away I got a nice warm hug, handshake, whatever you want to call from stirs, just slapping me around. And, 
Um, it just felt different. Um, so we took the tour and got to eat lunch with the players. Um, had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with um, Mason Decker, who just graduated recently. And it was just like the personal connection was something I didn't see anywhere else. Um, every, everywhere I went, it was kind of like football players would wave towards me, um, just acknowledge I was there, but it wasn't like a welcoming feeling. And um, once start getting around to March, April time, really need to make a decision. Um, my dad and I just kind of sat down. He's like, where's your gut? And um, hope really wasn't, it really wasn't a question whether it was like hope or anywhere else. I knew I wanted to come here. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it was just like so far, it was like everything I ever wanted and then a little bit more because I felt like I was going to get accepted into wherever I was going, even though as an outsider from, from Ohio and it, I mean, it's true. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know, here's what I'll say. And, you know, I, I can remember it as well. Um, walking onto campus, um, first and foremost, um, it, it feels great to be wanted. You know, when a coach recruits you, that's, that's a great feeling, but what I think hope, athletes and what we're looking for with Hope Athletes are proactive athletes too, right? To, to come to campus, Carter, to be involved with that, to continue that conversation with coach. Um, you know, we want you to come to Hope, but you're also trying us out. Um, so it's great to hear athletes who can come to campus, shake hands, give hugs, uh, meet the other players, but we want you to, to be proactive in that process as well. So that's really great. We're, these, what you guys know, if you're listening out there is these three coaches and you'll meet them here in just a second, um, are great people uh, who care deeply uh, about their athletes. Um, so much to the point where uh, we were just talking before we got on the air about some relationships with athletes who maybe chose not to play college sports during their time at Hope. And there's still strong relationships. Uh, I know Coach Fritz, um, he and his wife, Carol, travel around the country to go see his former athletes and they'll go to baseball games with him. Um, these are relationships that will be lifelong and, and it's joyful that athletics can help those relationships um, have that, make that happen. Okay, um, so let's, uh, let's bring our coaches in. We're gonna keep our athletes here. We're gonna bring our coaches in um, and let's get uh, Stu, Coach Fritz, um, Becky, Coach Schmidt, and uh, Peter, Coach Sturzma in on the call. We're, we're super excited uh, that you guys uh, have been uh, listening and, and watching. I'm sure it kind of puffs up your, your hearts and your chests a little bit to hear your athletes talk a little bit about you guys. Um, but let's, um, let's just have you guys introduce yourselves. Um, uh, Coach Fritz, we're going to start with you. Um, give us a little bit of background. Um, and uh, your time at Hope as, as a baseball coach. Yeah, thanks, Lance. I'm, I'm happy to be here as well. Um, this is year 27 for me here at Hope College as the head baseball coach. And um, I'm, I'm blessed to be here to work with the kids that I have an opportunity to work with. And uh, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you see two of my colleagues who I love dearly and, and the opportunity that I get to work with them um, I view it as a privilege every single day. Um, I love to compete. Um, you, you mentioned it earlier, Scooney mentioned it. Um, I like to win. And when we're between the white lines, that's what it's all about. So happy to be here tonight. Thanks, Stu. All right, Coach Schmidt, um, I had the pleasure of, of watching uh, Becky play at Hope. She was one of the best volleyball players in Hope history. Um, and she has, man, turned that into um, some amazing runs uh, in the NCAA tournament, but Coach Schmidt, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, uh, Becky Schmidt. I have been coaching at Hope for 16 years. This will be my 17th um, and uh, graduated from Hope in 98 as a physical education major with exercise science and business minors. Um, I'm, I too, uh, I just have loved this place and uh, and am thankful for the opportunity to be a part of just such an amazing community of, of competitors um, and uh, and people who are just really invested in the lives of young people. Awesome. Thanks, Becky. All right, Coach Sturzma, 
Um, you're the you're the newer guy uh, here at Hope, um, the rookie, if you will. Um, but you've been around for a few years. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks a lot, Lance. Uh, this is my uh, just finished my fourth full year here, starting our fifth season coming up this fall. Uh, just so uh, honored and privileged to be the head football coach at Hope College, and I was a high school coach for 16 years, and absolutely loved, loved, loved what I was doing as a middle school principal. And had the opportunity to come back home as I graduated from Hope College in 1993. And, uh, you know, what Scooney talked about at the beginning and you heard Coach Fritz and, and Coach Schmidt as well talk about the, 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 the life-changing opportunities this place has. Uh, it was true. Uh, the people, you know, you win with people. At the end of the day, you win with people. Surround yourself with good people and good things happen. Uh, just so proud of the young men that I have the opportunity to coach. Uh, 100 guys on our roster each and every year. We're trying to recruit the best and brightest young men that we can to put uh, the uniform on of Hope College to represent the Hope Nation. Because that's what this is about. It's not just about Hope football. It's about Hope College, the institution for which we represent. And just uh, honor and privilege to be here tonight. Thank you all for joining us. I look forward to uh, answering some questions and continuing this relationship. Go Hope. Thanks, Coach Sturzma. You know, as an admissions rep, uh, these are three examples, and we have uh, more than 20 uh, head coaches uh, across campus. Um, where we as admissions reps, when we're recruiting students, you know, if I've got a, a, a volleyball player and they say, you know, what can I expect at Hope? I say, you're going to get a great woman as a coach who's going to care for you deeply. Uh, and these are great examples of coaches who are going to do that for your athletes. Um, here's the question. We're going to start with you, Stu, and I want each of you to answer it. Why do you coach and why do you coach at Hope? Yeah, I'm not sure I have long enough to answer that question. <laughs> but, um, I, I think my why just comes from a sincere love um, for sport and specifically the game of baseball and a sincere love of kids. And I like to compete. And when you put those three things together, I think uh, coaching at a small Christian liberal arts college in Holland, Michigan um, is an absolutely great fit. Um, it's an easy product for me to sell. I get to sell Hope College every single day and I believe in it. I believe in the people. Sturz mentioned the people. Um, I believe in our administration. Um, so just lots of things um, that are easy to sell. And you know, if I answer the backside of that question about why do I do it at Hope, um, I didn't know anything about Hope. And in 1993, June of 1993, Carol and I moved here, fell in love with the place. And uh, we've spent our entire professional career here. Um, Hope, Hope's a fantastic place. It's an easy sell for me. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm privileged to be here and uh, I'm honored to be the baseball coach. That's awesome, Stu. Hey, that, that field doesn't look too bad behind you either. So that's, that's another good selling point. It's, it's one of my favorite places on campus. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, uh, Coach Schmidt, how about you? Why Hope and, and why do you coach? Uh, one of the things that we say in the locker room before we take the court um, most matches is let's show everybody in this gym how much we love this game and how much we love each other. And I think that that phrase speaks to kind of the reason that I do what I do. Um, I, uh, I love hope and I love volleyball and I love the opportunity to be able to impact lives in the same way that my life was impacted as a student. And so when I was, you know, getting ready to graduate from Hope uh, in the late 90s, I was, you know, thinking, what do I want to do with my life? And, and I looked around and I saw people that I, um, I really respected and, and that I was really thankful for that I had in my life. And I thought, you know, it'd be pretty nice to be able to be that to somebody else. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's, that's the main reason why I do what I do and, and why being at Hope is such a big, important part of that. That's awesome, Becky. That's awesome. All right, Coach Sturzma, how about you? Um, give us the reasons why you coach um, and why you do it at Hope. Well, thank you, Lance. Uh, you know, really, honestly, football is a game. Uh, it's not war or battle. It's a game that uh, makes strong, fast, tough dudes play. And uh, so that's about 15% of what I do is coach the game of football. Um, I look at it like this, and, and I truly mean this, is I hope that you measure us in 20 years and not in four. Uh, and I want our guys to be great dudes, uh, good dads, good husbands, contributors to society. I want them to change the world. Uh, my wife, Amy, and I were privileged to go to 11 weddings last summer and see our guys, uh, whether it's from high school or college, uh, you know, get married and to 
to see them grow up to be good young men uh, is what this is about. Now, when we get on the field, we want to be absolutely trained killers and, and play as hard as they possibly can play. But off the field, we want to be absolutely passionate about being good dudes uh, and representing the whole college brand, as I mentioned, the whole college nation uh, and everything that they do. Uh, and we're not perfect in any way, shape or form. Uh, but I coach because I want to see guys go to another level. You know, there's always that limit that everybody thinks they can go to, and there's always about 40 more, 50, 50, 60 more percent you can go uh, to a higher level. And I think that's what life is. Life's hard, life's tough. We're in a tough situation right now. We're in reverse situations around our country right now. And, boy, the game of football is a great parallel to life, right, uh, that you can work as hard as you possibly can. You could have injury. You could have something that doesn't go your way. You could have adversity you face in life. Well, we're facing that right now, and this is where we're going to be tested. And uh, I think we're all up for the big test. I keep telling our guys, we're going to get through this, and we're going to be back very, very soon. So that's why and why hope. Well, hope's pretty awesome. Hope is an awesome place, and uh, you know you can. I know a lot of people sell it on the on their brand. They're going to sell it on all the stuff they have. But I always say, just come to Hope, step on campus, be around our guys, be around our staff, because we are who we are, and we say who we, you know, we are who we say we are, and uh, just love being a part of it. I think it's awesome, Sturz. You, you talked. And each of you as coaches and each of the players have said this as well, like we, we want to win. You, you don't have to sacrifice uh, competition for relationships. Um, and I think at Hope that is very true where um, winning is a good thing. Um, and that obviously creates more opportunities and it creates more excitement and it creates more exposure. Um, but winning with people who you care about, I think is a hundred times better. Um, than winning with people who you don't care about. So thank you guys for investing uh, in each of your athletes. And that's what it came down to for each of you, right? You, you believe in your, your players. So, all right, Stu, we're going to um, talk about the off season. Um, you know, we, our heart aches for you because I, I know you wish you were on that field in that background right now, and that's not happening. But I know the baseball team is pretty close. What, what do you guys do in the off season to stay connected, to stay busy? Well, I, I think uh, culture is an overused word in our society right now, but I, we believe in it. And I think culture starts at the top of an athletic program, but it's built from within. And our, our guys, we, we do a lot of community service. We think it's our duty to give back to the community. Um, we do a lot of team building through that. And, and our guys just love spending time with each other. And our best teams are guys that, that just love being around each other. Um, we do a little Friday afternoon thing that's become um, a staple in our program where kids come in and sign the academic book. And we, we do it for a couple of reasons. And I'm not sure the, the biggest reason is the academic part. I think it's more the social part, but I look forward. I will cancel things on Friday afternoon so I can be in there with our guys. And it's, um, it's them impacting me more than it's me impacting them. And it's having Coach Schmidt and it's having Coach Sturrs walk by come in saying, Hey, what's up? Um, that's, that's a part of our culture that builds team from within. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's just fun for me to watch our guys love each other. And that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's all the activities. We do lots of activities. Uh, we, we paint ball, we go bowl and we do those kinds of things. But I think as much as anything, it's just being with each other. That's it. And, and what a blessing, right? You know, I think a school hope size, um, the opportunity to hang out with each other is, is ever present um, and for teams. And, it, you know, it's not just teams, right? You, you know, I think there's, there's community uh, amongst a baseball team having each other, but friendships can start because one of the guys on the team introduces you to a friend of another guys on the team and all of a sudden those people become friends as well. So it's a great avenue to, to be together and to be part of a community. For, for um, sure. And, yeah. and our teams care about each other. That's another part of our community. Yeah. Yeah. We get the, the Hopies are going on. We, you know, if you don't know, Hope does its own version of the ESPYs. Um, and we've been doing that for several years now. And it's pretty cool uh, to see the teams rally around each other and support each other for these great accomplishments, for these great turnaround stories, um, you know, athletes who are doing amazing things in the community and hope athletics really stands up for each other. So, all right, uh, Becky, you've had a lot of uh, successful moments uh, as a player. Um, you've had a lot of amazing successful stories as a coach. Um, 
give us one, just one little piece um, an experience as a coach that made you maybe maybe the proudest. I'm sure you've got multiple moments, but one that made you really proud. Well, I would probably be remiss if I didn't say winning the national championship in 2014. That was a pretty special moment um, and uh, and was the culmination of, of a lot. Um, I think that, uh, you know, when I think about all of the different types of moments that have been impactful uh, on me that my team has experienced um, and what we've experienced together, it's that they're doing something that they've never done before, you know? And so that could be winning a championship or winning, a, you know, a conference championship and NCAA, getting into the NCAA tournament, winning an NCAA tournament game. Um, it can be learning a technique that they've, they've been working hard on, you know, it can be, um, uh, and seeing them put it into action in, in a, in a contest, it could see, you know, a, be a leader that, you know, really steps up and, and, you know, engages some conflict in an appropriate way and, and makes a difference. And you see that kind of growth. Um, but you see it, it's things that they haven't done before and that you get to kind of, uh, walk alongside them as they're, as they're having those types of experiences. One quick like experience that I thought was really impactful um, and transformative for our team was back in 2014, we went to Washington DC to play in a tournament at Gallaudet University. Gallaudet's a school for the deaf and um, their volleyball team is pretty good, um, but they had a, not a great game uh, the, that day and we were supposed to be able to play each other in the finals of this tournament, didn't work out. But I talked to the coach and I said, hey, we really just want to hang out with your team a little bit. So um, after the tournament was over, we went over to Gallaudet's uh, cafeteria with their team and our teams shared a meal together um, and were talking to each other, you know, by, you know, typing things out on their phones and passing it over. And, and you know, it, just watching that whole engagement, I just thought was, was, you know, honestly, one of the most fulfilling things that I've, that I've done um, or seen in coaching um, because it, it does transcend what we're doing on the volleyball court. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's been a lot of those. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, Becky. And it, because I know you, it doesn't surprise me, right? Those are, those are some moments in your life that you take full advantage of. Um, and, and having the opportunity to be a coach at one of the top women's volleyball programs in the country um, you make sure that your players know like look volleyball is a privilege um, we got to make sure we take advantage of these opportunities that are presented to us um, oh, that's that's really awesome all right uh, coach Sturzma um, we, we got a lot of people out there who want to know tonight hey am I good enough to play Division three, Division two, II, Division one, NAIA, whatever it might be, college athletics. What kind of advice are you going to give to those sophomores, juniors, seniors out there who are wondering, what do I have to do to be a scholar athlete or a college athlete? Yeah, thanks, Lance. Uh, one of the things that we do a uh, tremendous amount of is we, we attend a lot of prospect camps and we host our own prospect camps. As a part of those prospect camps, uh, in fact, we've always done five in conjunction with Ferris State University and Tony Neese, the head coach uh, there and I, and perhaps some of the viewers have, have heard us do this, is we always talk to the parents about the recruiting process. Uh, recruit, recruiting, you're going to read a lot, hear a lot about recruiting, and, and all I would say is be open-minded to this process uh, because there's going to be a lot of information that's going to be fed your way that this is the way you get recruited, this is the way you do this. Um, just so you know, if you're really good, we're going to find you. Uh, and I would also not get caught up in the, uh, the division number behind the DIV, division one, two, or three, uh, because it turns out, uh, Stu Fritz and I shared an athlete this past year. He was our starting quarterback for three years. He was, was set to be four times, four time all league for Stu. He was the MVP of our league on offense. And he would have been the MVP in baseball for Stu. He's six foot three, 238 pounds, and he's a quarterback. And, you know, so you're like, well, geez, that's a Division two or Division one athlete. And, you know, he did he did go there to begin with, uh, and he transferred. Why? Because he wanted to find the love of the game again. And you ask his parents and you ask him any time, any day, he'd say, I, I'd choose hope 10 times over. So I'd say don't chase the division number behind it. Chase the, the fit. And I would also say it's easier said than done and in particular times like this, but don't chase the money. There's going to be money that's going to be offered, and there's going to be things that they're going to talk about. We offer you this. It's, Here's what I'm going to offer you, and here's what Becky's going to offer you. Here's what Stu Fritz is going to offer you. 
going to offer your son or daughter an opportunity to play at one of the greatest institutions in the Midwest, if not the country. We're going to offer your son or daughter a chance to play at a high level of Division Three athletics that in volleyball have led the country in attendance. And, and you're going to go play in front of people that understand what you're about. They're going to play in front of your professors, play in front of your peers. We're going to offer you an opportunity to get a job after you graduate because that's what this is about. This is about getting a job. So when we say we're going to offer you something, we're going to offer you an opportunity to, to pay all part or none of your tuition because there's going to be everybody in between. Uh, but that's what we're offering. And so don't get caught up in all the things that, well, they like me better because they wear sweet uniforms. Hey, we have all the best uniforms we can have. We've got all the Nike swooshes. I love that stuff. We have our own charter buses that we travel up. Look at the stadium behind Stu. Look at the, the Voss Center. We play in front of a huge following at NCAA Division Three. So don't get caught up in that stuff. Oh, it's cool. I love that stuff. And, you know, we have jumbotrons, play loud music. I'd love to have blimps and fighter jets go over every day. But go to a place where you're going to fit, where you're going to get a degree and you're going to graduate. And you're going to have a chance to play at the highest level that you can possibly play, which is pretty good. So sorry, I went a little long there. We lost you there for a little bit, Stu. But I think what I hear you say is you want to be at the place where you belong. Um, yeah. And as a as a scholar athlete, I think at the Division three level, right? There's no athletic scholarships at Hope. Um, so that being the case, you want to make sure that that athletic fit is good. But you want to make sure, most of all, that you're in the place that fits you the best, that you're going to belong the most. So. And I would also right. add, you got to be, you got to have the right fit with the right people. My son is going to go play for Stu Fritz, and I, you know, I I'm honored that uh, as a dad that my son can play for a coach at Oak College like that. That's awesome. All right, we're going to have, uh, hopefully this doesn't get uh, too crazy here, but we're going to bring the athletes back in, um, Cam, Gabby, and Carter. Um, and we're going, to, um, we're going to put them on the spot with their coaches. Uh, Cam, Gabby, and Carter will go in that order. Um, I'd just love for you to share maybe a, a really brief um, experience that you had with your coach that was a special moment for you over the last couple of years. Go ahead. Yeah. So kind of, you know, on and off the field, there's kind of a couple things with coach Fritz that um, have kind of made a big impact on me um, on the field. It has, it has to be from last year. I was in the MIAA semifinal game and I was pitching and coach, I'm about to come out of the dugout for the seventh inning to go pitch a seventh inning. And coach comes up to me and he's like, you know, this is your game. Like, take the ball. This is all you to the end. And it was kind of the first, not the first time, but like one of the most impactful times to me where it was like, okay, like coach has full faith in me um, to put, take the team on my back and kind of do what he knows I can do best. Um, so just kind of, you know, what he did for me there was just like kind of a big thing that I really hadn't ever seen before um, in earlier experiences um, when I was younger. Um, and then just, you know, he kind of touched on it, but you know, Friday signing the book, he, he can kind of touch on it too, that I used to be a really quiet freshman cam, sophomore cam even. Um, I've kind of grown out of my shell a little bit. Um, and just like being able to laugh uh, with everyone and all the stories. Um, and then the one other big thing with him, I, I actually had pneumonia last year right during the baseball season. And um, I had to miss a start. I, I missed a Monday game. And I remember I, I re being really upset just because, you know, I couldn't be there for my team. And coach texting me, take your time, you know, go get the help you need. Um, just kind of like the reassurance that he provided me was awesome. And um, it was kind of like he's a family member, um, just checking in on me, trying to make sure that I could come back to full health for the rest of the season. And it was something that I think was a lot more important to me than he would ever realize. Um, but I think that's like with, with the culture at Hope is that how, how people are, they want to help you, they're like a family. So those are kind of the couple things that I kind of remember, so. That's awesome. All right, Ms. Gabby, uh, tell us a little bit of uh, an experience that you had with Coach Schmidt that made an impact on you. Okay, so I'm gonna say two, but I'll make them quick. Um, and the two that come to mind aren't actually like strictly volleyball. Um, Coach, you've been there for me, you know, technically, athletically, every way from a training standpoint. Um, but the first one is, uh, a week before junior preseason, I got a little stomach ache that ended up being appendicitis. Uh, so I had to get my appendix taken out and a coach drove to the hospital I was at during the surgery. 
um, and was just, she came to my house a couple of days later, check in, like we talked about what my recovery looked like and somehow I, I was literally back like the day before our first game. Um, so that was really amazing, but I thought that was pretty cool that she came to my special surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other memory, or I guess is very recent, um, I guess I had a little change of plans in terms of what kind of professional or graduate school I wanted to do. And I decided a couple months ago that I wanted to apply to graduate assistantships. And I was like, coach, can you help me like work this out? And we found an opportunity that we thought would be really great for me. And it was uh, one week until the deadline. So she absolutely dropped everything and helped me get all my materials together and made some phone calls. And amazingly, I was offered the assistantship and I'm able to stay with a great volleyball program and get my master's. And that's really all thanks to her. So hmm. thank you. That's awesome, Gabby. All right, Carter, how about you? Uh, give me an experience maybe on or off the field uh, where Coach Sturz has, has impacted your life. Oh, yeah. So like Cam and Gabby, I got a couple, but I'll make sure to make them quick. Uh, first one was uh, at the end of my freshman year football season. Um, we had one on one meetings with uh, Sturs and I went in there thinking it was going to be like, um, how'd you like the season? Um, just like football talk. And it turned out it was just like man to man. Um, it was more personal, um, kind of sat me down, like got a good evaluation of how I liked it. Um, and that's, that's what kind of stuck out to me along these, uh, these past two years is it like, yeah, winning's fun for football, but, um, like, like Sturz mentioned, um, it's about the lasting effect and that really like hit home to me. Secondly was, uh, this year, um, just the full faith that Sturz had had a little bit bigger of a role this year. And it was, um, like, I never looked at Sturz and he never looked at me like, hey, um, I hope you make this play. It was full faith that Sturz was going to make the right call and we're going to execute it to perfection. So, yeah. Man, uh, let me tell you, and I had the same experience with my coach at Hope. Uh, when they believe in you, um, you can do amazing things. Um, and you do. You break through that wall, don't you, Sturz? So, okay. Um, we're going to bring uh, Scooney back in here. I know time is uh, quickly getting away from us. We could talk about, oh, Scooney went outside. That's really awesome. There he is. He's in his garage doing some extra work. Hey, um, just a couple questions that have filtered in from some of our um, viewers tonight. Um, one specific question about scheduling classes based on your practice schedule. I want you to know, and you're looking at three coaches who are also professors here at Hope College. Um, so we work with you, um, you know, an athlete, um, it doesn't necessarily get preferential treatment, but we want to, uh, make any hope students experience, um, more easily accessible. So if, if you've got practice in the afternoon, um, you know, we can try and work around those schedules. I always think labs are those one things, right. That happen in the afternoons and evenings and you can't miss a lab, right. You have to go to that lab in order for that class. This is where I think athletes become proactive and they tell their coaches, hey, I've got this lab Tuesday afternoon. I'm not going to be able to make it to practice. And I've heard coaches literally in those conversations go, no worries. You go do what you got to do. Make sure you get your workout in. Uh, make sure you do what you need to do as an athlete um, to make that happen. And, you know, the other question I have, and, and maybe we'll bounce it around to the coaches real quickly, and Scooney as well, because I know he sees this on all aspects, but walk-on players, right? This is, um, you know, everybody has a dream of, of playing Division three, Division two, Division one, NAIA athletics. Um, you know, can walk-on players make varsity teams at a place like Hope College? Uh, Scooney, you want to start with that one and, and give us your thoughts, and then maybe we'll go to Stu, Becky, and, and Peter on that one afterwards as well. Well, I think the ironic piece is everybody's a walk-on at Hope. Um, so, I mean, that's a, I mean, that's really a reality. I mean, we have open tryouts, um, for everybody that's coming, you know, for the sports that we do make cuts, uh, we have some JV programs, um, where there's opportunities. So I think that there's, there's lots of opportunities for, um, you know, everybody that that's out there. 
uh, I think, you know, really in the end, and, and we say this, but um, we're going to love you whether you're the best player or you're the worst player. That, that really doesn't matter. I think the, the piece is like our coaches are trying to win. So like if you can play and uh, you you come in here and you can do it, like let's go. And uh, we're, they'll be ready to take you and ready to go with that. Love it. Love it. Stu, what do you think? Honestly, for us, I, I would echo the same thing Scooney said. Everybody is really a walk-on. Um, we recruit some players more than others simply because they're easier to see than others. But um, kids that come into our program get two guarantees. Number one, they're going to have an equal opportunity. Number two, they're going to have people that care about them. Those are the two guarantees that we give to kids in our program. And for us, we do make cuts. We, we keep our roster at 32. And in the fall, um, it, it's an open tryout. Everyone is welcome. But those two guarantees are two things that I know that uh, unequivocally those are going to happen. And um, so really everybody, everybody is a walk-on, um, awesome. if, if, if you will. Yeah. And Becky, I know you, you, you and, and Sturz as well have, have JV teams. Can you talk a little bit about that, how the JV team can be a feeder for your varsity team? Yeah, we, um, we have a JV team that usually uh, there are, you know, between nine and 12 players on our JV team, between 14 and 16 on our varsity um, there are all there's every year we have players that are on our varsity team who who played one year on the JV um, and uh, it you know it's hard right you know it's not uh, uh, you're not seeing a whole lot of of carryover from that but there are those types of opportunities and I think that there's three reasons that we would have somebody that would be uh, like that would really resonate with a JV experience and one of those is if uh, we just don't have the right kind of availability and position, but you're really good still, you know, so you might be a really good player, but we've got four players at that position on the varsity team already. We'll kind of put you in the JV situation so that we can keep you at hope and keep you playing volleyball and then have you come in when that, when that spot opens up. Um, there are other players who need a little bit more time to develop. Um, that maybe in that had the, the kind of the club experience or the high level high school experience and the college game is just different, right? You know, if you're trying to win a national championship, the division three level, that's pretty good volleyball. Not everybody's got the opportunity to do that might need a little bit of time to be able to, to get up to speed with that. And so, uh, with that would be another reason that somebody would be on the JV team. Um, the other reason is if you are, um, you just love hope and you're not done playing volleyball yet. And we want to be able to keep, create opportunities for those for those types of folks. And you know, you've got to have the requisite skill to be able to get to that to that level. But um, we like having the opportunity for people to continue playing game a game they love. That's awesome. All right, seriously, you, you've got the largest team on campus, a hundred guys, um, walk-ons. Tell tell me more about that because yeah. I'm sure in your world that exists. Yeah. So uh, we actually do not have a JV team. I've not had one in four years. Uh, our recruiting model is we, we start out with about 800 in our database. We narrow down to about 400 through evaluations of film. We do look at every kid that we bring on campus uh, from a film standpoint. Uh, and then when, when we do, we visit about 110 guys with the hopes that 45 of those players will uh, commit to us. And, you know, that's a little bit different model than many Division three schools. Uh, many are bringing in 75 to 100 freshmen, and we want to bring in the right guys. We brought in 41 freshmen last year and have 39 still on our campus and then our roster. I'm very proud of that, that we're not just siphoning through people. We're trying to bring in the right guys. We're not recruiting a quarterback in this year's class because of the way our depth is a quarterback. So we're trying to model our recruiting uh, after that. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're trying to win. I mean, Scooney hates what I say, but if we don't win, I get fired. So we're going to try to recruit the very best players to win uh, at, at, the, the, at the end of the day. And the best will play. I mean, the players decide who plays. And so to say that everybody's a walk, I think I'll, I'll, the only thing I'll disagree with is that we recruit some guys way harder than others. Some guys might, you know, might just a, a attend and be a part of it. But yet we've also watched those guys come along because of the development. We've watched guys grow and grow three or four inches. For those who watched, you know, the Bulls, especially the other night, Scotty Pippen grew six inches in college. We've had guys grow three, four, five inches in college and gained an upwards of 50 to 55 pounds. So a lot can change in those years. And, and that's just developmental. Yeah, you know, I, I want everybody, and we've got to close up shop here because we got to get you back to your lives, but um, I want everybody to hear this, that being proactive, being engaged 
with the coaches at Hope College. And I'm, I'm not just talking when you're here. I'm talking about when you're a junior, when you're a senior um, in high school and, and forming relationships with, with these three coaches and the others that we have on campus. Those conversations, they're going to be honest with you. They're going to be engaged with you. They're going to be proactive with you. Um, finding ways to have a relationship uh, with the institution that you want to play at and with the coach specifically that you want to play for uh, at a place like Hope. Trust me, even if you don't play on that varsity team, um, you're going to have great relationships with these amazing people. So I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Um, once again, I think we could be here for another three hours if we wanted to talking about Hope College Athletics. Um, I'm just really excited uh, that we've got something to look forward to. You know, one of the big things I'm looking forward to when we come back in the fall um, is watching our athletes play. There's something about sports that brings us together, unlike anything that I've ever experienced in my life. And I'm happy that when people are back on campus in the fall and all this is behind us, uh, we can go out in our orange and blue and, and cheer on our teammates, our friends, um, and our coaches. So thank you guys all. Thank you athletes. Thank you coaches. Thank you Scooney. Um, have a wonderful night. I just want to remind everybody else. Uh, we've got another uh, evening with Hope College tomorrow evening. It's with our campus ministries team, another amazing group of people on campus who are directly impacting the lives of our Hope students. Uh, the following night, Thursday, we have an amazing uh, conversation happening about our Phelps Scholars Program, a living and learning community focused around multicultural life. Uh, we hope you can join us for those as well. And as always, if you have any additional questions that weren't answered tonight, reach out to your admissions representative, reach out directly to the coaches. You can find their information online. Uh, they will get back to you. They love talking about Hope College sports. So send us the questions. We'll be happy to help you. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful night and good night. Go Hope.